Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky. And today I've got a really pretty uh, journal page for you. I'm working in my 8x8 Dilutions Creative Journal. And it's the journal that I got when I did the Diane Reevely classes. And I'm using some of the background papers that we made in the class. So this blue paper was just made with uh, the Dilutions paints and a little brayer, which is like a little rolling pin for paint uh, if you haven't seen one before and I'm using these stamps I get a lot of questions about these stamps I think they're Prima that's all I can tell you because the packaging is long gone but I have a feeling they're older ones from Prima so I'm stamping on my stamps to this scrap piece of paper that I had lying around with paint on it and it's it's a fun technique when you feel like doing an art journal page that looks messy but you don't want to get messy right then so quite often um, you've seen before I use my used up journal where I just chuck in extra paint and slap it on a page so that it's there for later and gosh it helps when you're feeling that creative urge but you don't want to get out a heap of supplies it really really is nice to have some of the work already done for you so i'm using these flowers and all i knew is that i wanted to use this piece of paper that had been <laughs> it's one of those things do you ever have those bits of uh, supplies on your desk that just keep moving around your desk they never find their proper home they don't really have a proper home but they just they just migrate around your craft space just here there and everywhere and i was sick of looking at this piece of paper so I decided I wanted to do something with it and these stamps were top of my um, on top of my stamp little storage system that I have as well as these Jane Davenport ones now I haven't actually used these Jane Davenport ones I bought them a while ago but I I've been I don't know I just I haven't done many face art journal pages lately so I'm putting some clear gesso all over my pages because I wanted to use some inks and I just don't like the way that the Dilutions Creative Journal reacts to uh, ink. I I know that Diane Reevely made it so that you could use it without um, using the gesso, but I just kind of like my my inks to kind of blend and merge a little bit more. And by doing the gesso, it kind of gives it a bit of a a waterproof coating, so that when I spray the water on top, so they blend it. it it just, it just looks a bit more flowy so I'm just using the packaging technique as you would have seen me before especially if you're uh, subscribed to my main channel Inky Quill and using my heat gun to dry it off next up I'm doing a very lazy but efficient technique called I don't know the water drop let's we we came up with a name for it I think someone came up with a name like the drippy drop technique. I'm going to call it the drippy drop technique. So basically, if you have inks that are water soluble, which means they react to water, um, they, if you put water on them and leave it for 30 seconds or so and soak it up with paper towel, it kind of gives a bleached distress look. And I really, really love that because it gives a whole nother, it looks like you've done stenciling over the top or just kind of given it a bit of extra TLC but really you haven't done much more than a minute's worth of work <laughs> so next up I'm using my stays on black ink because it's the only black ink that I really use mainly because I do ink a lot on photos or on surfaces that I want the ink to be permanent and I'm pressing behind because it is the first page of this journal and it's a bit uneven I was figuring out this stamp comes with different eyes and noses and mouths I was gonna say mouths um, and I decided to do the closed eyes girl I just thought that she looked a bit delicate so if you enjoy faces but don't enjoy drawing them but enjoy having them in your art journal uh, this is a good stamp to have in your stash um, I think it's something that I definitely want to revisit again and do a few different techniques with and even just use the face parts without the face that's provided um, I think that would be fun as well so once I have that stamped down I decide that this girl's going to have a flower head um, it it kind of reminded me I made this back in December yeah in December 
and it was recently after uh, the Melbourne Cup was in Australia here, which is our biggest horse race of the whole year. It's the they call it the race that stops the nation, and all of the ladies get dressed up. It's on TV. It's everywhere, and it reminded me of the fascinators that that are just growing bigger every year. Honestly, some of the headwear that these ladies wear to the races, I don't know how they function with it. They are huge. So that's where I kind of drew my inspiration from once I had these flower stamps done uh, and I was looking at that face one. Next up, I'm using this tissue paper. It's printed tissue paper. I think it's Tim Holtz, if I remember correctly. And I'm just using some matte gel medium to stick that down. Uh, matte gel medium is really good for sticking down tissue paper and napkins because it's so wet and juicy that the, the napkins and the tissue paper just kind of soak it up and it kind of gives a bit of an invisible look to the background, which I really do like. I'm also using a... Oh, no, I will in a moment. I think I use some washi tape in a moment too. This is a different brand, this printed tissue paper here. I don't, it's definitely not a Tim Holtz one. It's something else. I think I got it at a cheap shop, maybe. Um, but finger wiggling, figuring out what to do. I was... I really wanted this girl to have something else other than the flowers on her head and so I grabbed this gear stamp that I have in my background stamps that I hadn't actually used I think it was a new stamp at this point and what I should have done is stamped it a few times off the page but I didn't and so when I stamped it on I should have stamped it off first because the first impression is never a good impression uh, but I didn't and so I got, a, I got a line in it and the stamping was just horrendous. So what I decided to do is that, that was a fail, uh, I grabbed my, just a, a black pen, my Statler pigment liner, and I kind of did a sketchy overview, like a sketchy outline over the top of these gears. Now, I actually really like the way that this fail worked out. <laughs> it... In the end, it kind of looked, uh, it, co it contrasted really well with the, the bold crispness. Is that a word? The bold crispness of the flower compared to this sketchy gear. It, it kind of looked like I had hand drawn it when really I hadn't. So don't always run away from your fails in your art journaling because sometimes you can turn them into things that even look better than what you had first envisioned. So I'm sticking that down with my Scotch tacky glue. It's just a nice wet glue that I like and I can get my hands on it. And I felt like with the black in the background from that tissue paper, I needed to outline um, this flower. So I'm just using a Posca pen. It's probably a medium kind of size that they have. They have a lot of different uh, nib sizes. And I, I, I tend to gravitate towards this medium size because if you have a play with it, you can make it uh, well, of course, you can make it thicker by outlining it a couple of times, but you can also make it quite thin by not giving a lot of pressure and kind of barely touching the paper. I'm adding some little uh, like swirly circles to the middle of the flower, and then I decide to outline the face as well, as well as all the facial features, which it, it was worth stamping it because I didn't have to draw it, but it yeah it, I think it just needed to be a little bit darker and a little bit more bold I add a little bit of details to the gear as well just to tie it all in and now it's time to add my journaling quote so whenever I want to do a quote on a Pinterest page oh, quote on a Pinterest page quote on an art journal page I head to Pinterest and I just type in a keyword so this one, I I think the word, I don't think I wrote power. I think it was mind or thought or maybe girl boss quote. I typed in just something very generic like that and you get so many things. On my Pinterest board, I have a, a folder dedicated just to quotes um, called Quotey McQuote. Um, and if you follow me on Pinterest, you'll have a wealth of art journaling quotes that could probably fill up your entire art journal. 
So I'm just using some Scripty font here to write it in both the Posca pen and just my Stadler pigment liner, probably in a 0.1 because at this point I hadn't lost it. It was before I had lost my favorite pen. Ooh, I think I just had thunder. That was a bit of a tangent, sorry, but I think we may have a thunderstorm this evening. So this page, I really like the, the kind of simplicity of it. I decided that flower needed a pop. It needed a bit of an extra something. So off camera, because you don't need to sit through all of that, I just used my Uniball Signo Broad. Is that what it is? I think that's what it is. Uniball Signo Broad. Yes, uh, which is just a nice white gel pen. And I really like it because it's quite opaque. Um, do it's it's more forgiving than the thin white Posca pen if you're impatient when it comes to wet paint. It's not completely forgiving, but it's more forgiving than all of the Posca paint pens that I have sent into the garbage can. Next up, I'm adding a little bit of washi tape because I felt like it needed a little bit of pink uh, to tie in that background color. It was kind of looking like the pink didn't really belong, but I wanted it to merge in a little bit more. And I don't trust my washi that well, so I used a bit of matte gel medium just to, just to help it along here. I've grabbed my Winsor Newton watercolors, which are my favorite watercolors that my bestie Courtney bought me, best Christmas present. Uh, and I use them all the time. And I'm just using a bit of water on a paintbrush to do the little rosy cheeks first. And then I add the color afterwards. And I did want them to be very um, like, oh, what's the word? Very fictional rosy cheeks I guess you could say like a little doll like you could imagine a little doll with little pink cheeks so then I'm doing some splatters using the watercolors actually and I think this is something that I'm going to try and do more often I I love the softness of the splatters compared to using say a Heidi Shine Mist um, they were a lot they were just a lot softer and with the paintbrush I was able to get some bigger splatters as well but this layout is all done. Thanks so much for watching. If you're a new subscriber, if you're a new viewer, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and I will see you all very, very soon with another journaling or art journaling video. Bye.